Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, and today we're going to be talking about the rigid body world settings. But before we do that, let's see what we've got for our individual objects. So here's what we have already for our cylinder objects that we've done in the past few videos. Uh, going over the settings, you can copy these settings if you're following along or kind of use them as a guide, take a screenshot or whatever. Uh, I'm going to go over a couple of them that I changed. I did change this to eight ounces uh, for both of them. Um, and it uh, doesn't really do anything different if you change it for both of them. And if you remember in another video, I did say that I didn't see a difference between uh, changing this between eight ounces or 100 pounds. Um, so we got 100 pounds and eight ounces and we see they act just the same so relatively colliding with one another the simulation is pretty much the same but if you change one of them so let's change the bottom one back to eight ounces here and see what happens boom it just launches that thing through our floor and into oblivion here you can see um, let's go ahead and select that one Boom, and it's gone down down there. So yeah, when you have a hundred pound object that's colliding with an eight ounce object, yeah, you're gonna have that uh, that uh, effect. Um, likewise, if we change this to a hundred pounds and this to eight ounces, you can see well the eight ounce object doesn't have much of an effect on the hundred pound one. So yeah. Uh, if they're the same, of course, they're going to act very similar to each other, or not 0 0.8, 0 0.5 is half a pound, 8 ounces. Boom, just like that. Okay, so I did change that. Now, I also changed these, made both of these to uh, 20 feet per second for the linear and angular velocity, and that is just to reduce the jitter. So um, once they fall, you can see once they land, they start jittering um, and if I have this too low it'll continue to jitter but as long as the motion here falls below 20 feet per second then they stop jittering and they just settle me the simulation stops so that is exactly what I want and they are looking pretty nice just like that all right and the floor of course I haven't really changed it it's still passive we got a convex hole and friction and bounciness are both at 0.5 we don't have a collision margin set on any of our objects and it seems to be working just fine so okay so let's get into the rigid body world and for that go to scene properties and scroll down to rigid body world now I'm gonna go ahead and also extend out my outliner here so we can see our collections um, and the first thing you notice is that you have this check mark that you can disable that simulation. And of course, the simulation doesn't play uh, unless it is enabled. And if I open this here, we can also click this button to completely remove the rigid body world from the scene, which we don't want to do. But now what we do want to do is the look at these collections. So if I click here on collection, we can see the collections that we have available uh, and we have uh, these rigid body worlds here that are automatically created. Now this is, uh, the reason there's more than one here is because I've deleted and re-added them. And I don't exactly know how that works, but that's why you see more than one here. Um, and then here, these are the collections, the ones without the F, the ones with the F are the rigid body worlds. And the F stands for fake user. And that gets into data blocks and all that stuff. I'm not gonna go into, just know that here in this list, the F stands for the rigid body world collection. These up here stand for our view layer collections, which are up here. So we've got our collection, we got tools, and then I also have another scene that has the collection.001. Now this gets confusing because the rigid body world collections and the view layer collections are separate from each other, but they're overlap in relation to one another. And this took me forever to figure out. So um, let's talk about the actual um, view layer collections. So what I'm going to do is come over here and select all of my objects and I'm going to press M to move to collection. So I can move to an existing collection or I can create a new collection. I'm going to select new collection and we're going to type in physics all and enter enter and now we have all of these under our physics all. Now of course our physics still work because we're still using the rigid body world uh, collection here. So I'm just going to select this and then choose physics all, which is what we just created. And then 
go in and do that. And now, of course, they um, are activated. Now, if I keep this on uh, the Rigid Body World 3, which is what we had it on, um, that will also include that. Because that includes pretty much everything that's that's in the scene. So back in physics all, uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here uh, to create a new collection by right clicking on the physics all and new. And then we got physics all one. And then I'm going to right click and then new again and physics all two. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to move that to physics all one. And then I'm going to select both of these here and move these to physics all two. Now physics all st should still work because uh, each one of these are under the physics all collection. And that is what we have selected. But the cool thing here is what we can do now is I can decide which of these I want to actually have as the active physics collection or rigid body collection. So if I say physics all one and then go back, you can see it falls right through everything because this one is the only one on physics all one. Likewise, if I change this to physics all two, then nothing happens because you remember this one is um, started deactivated, which we have selected over here. But if we have all of them selected, then we have this. Now, if for some reason this uh, doesn't work, and I think it's if you move them between each other, um, let's try that. Let's just select all of them. I'm going to move all of them to physics one. Okay, that seems to be working okay. But sometimes there's a glitch where, oh, that's because we have physics all. Okay, so let's do, um, yeah, physics all two. Okay, so now we're all under physics all one and nothing is happening. So let's just move them to physics all two now and see what happens. Okay, yeah, all right, and that seems to be working all right. Okay, so I messed around with this to see if I can find this glitch again, but I moved the cylinder five, the top one, back to physics one, and I left this one at physics two, and then I selected physics all. And then I have this glitch to where if I move it, okay, and right click, it snaps it into place, but then I go back up and I try to play that again, and it doesn't do anything. It kind of uh, snaps it down here, and it's kind of jitters, and yeah, so it just kind of glitches out. So yeah, if you run into any sort of glitches like this where the physics isn't working properly uh, after you've moved them to different collections, uh, what I found works if you, is if you just disable the collection and then re-enable that again, uh, then everything should work like it's supposed to. Okay, so this is how I like to do things. Um, it is visual, it's hierarchical, it makes sense to me. However, apparently, this is not how you're supposed to do this. So after doing some testing, I ran into some issues where my physics objects completely disappeared, like completely from the scene, uh, not for, just from the scene, from the blend file. And so I did a little bit of research and I found this. Um, objects deleted when removed from rigid body world collection. Um, and let's read. It says, while the user, let's scroll in here a little bit. While the user should never do that, it appears many end up using a view layer instancing collection as a rigid body world collection. And even worse, have objects in that unique collection. <gasps> I thought that's what it was for. Blender, if you didn't want people to choose a view layer here, then why do you have the option to choose a view layer when you select this? It just doesn't make any sense. So this, um, this um, uh, response here doesn't make any sense to me. And so let's keep reading. Therefore, when removing the rigid body simulation from an object, among other things, it has to remove it from the rigid body world collection. It would fully delete it from that blend file. Okay, so that was the problem. And I was running into that issue down the road. And if we come across it again, I'll show you. But um, what they want you to do instead is Remember how I said that there's a difference between the view layers and the rigid body world collections. They overlap, but they are actually separate. And to create a new rigid body world, what you have to do is you can select these and go to your object, 
come to collection, and now you have a few more options. So our move to collection, this was our view layer with M, but now you can see control G and a whole bunch of different um, combinations of G, the key of G to create a new collection. So let's go ahead and do that, create a new collection. And then uh, down here, you have this option to name the collection. If you don't see this option here, come to view and make sure adjust last operation is checked. So let's just change this. I'm just going to say new, enter. And now come over here and we can see our new Rigid Body World collection because it has the F in front of it. And now if we select that, then um, our physics should act. But again, glitching out again here. So like I said, disable everything and, dis and enable it again. Let's try it again. All right, so there we go. So if you are running into objects disappearing from your blend file completely, then create a new collection, a new rigid body world collection by control G and then uh, do that. Now, uh, this, these are supposed to act very similar to the view layer collections, except you don't have any sort of visualization, visualization with those. So uh, the collection, you can uh, remove them uh, from one collection. You can add them to another collection. You can remove them from all collections. It really acts very similar up here, except there's no hierarchy. I can't see anything here. Now, you can go to the blend of the data API, and you can see these collections, but it's not like this you can't move them around and it's just a big pain in the butt so um i'm a very visual person so i'm going to stick with the view layer collections until i run across problems and i suggest you can do the same um so if you run across things that are completely disappearing from your blend file or other really funny glitches that you're running across and nothing else is working to fix them come here and try to create a new rigid body world and um, group those all into that. It is a bit of a pain. It's really not that intuitive at all. Um, I don't know why it's like that. I hope for the future um, they can, if they want these rigid body worlds separate, they have um, something here where you can actually visualize, visualize, I can't even say that word, visualize it. <laughs> But that's all for the collections. In the next video, I'm going to go over the cache and baking and some of, uh, some of these other settings here. So stay tuned and you'll see me over there.